Hey Defenders, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to look at configuring our Wazoo Manager to send us email alerts when rules fire over a particular level threshold. Um, so what this will allow us to do is to be able to have a email inbox that will alert us uh, when a particular rule severity fires. Right. So now we don't have to just be monitoring our Kibana dashboards all the time. You know, we can set that aside and continue on with some other work and have a email inbox set up to where if a particular rule fires that we want to be made aware about, we'll get an email uh, alert in our inbox and then that will then direct us, of course, to going into Kibana and gathering some of the metadata on the alert. Um, so this will be this is a good solution to allow your investigators to work on other tasks and only be you know brought into the mix whenever a rule fires that you are interested in. So let's go ahead and begin. But first, time for my shameless plug. If you want to learn more about our company, head on over to opensecure.co. If you would like to hire us for a project, select the hire us button at the top of this video. To see firsthand the power of open source technology, take advantage of our interactive demo. Select the demo button and start exploring. Now let's get back to the video. So a little bit of how this works. Uh, we have our Wazoo Manager. There's a configuration in the osec.conf. Uh, there's a XML tag block that we can use to set up a SMTP service. Uh, and specifically tell our Wazoo Manager, you know, what SMTP server we want to take advantage of. Uh, this could be, you know, an internal SMTP server that you have set up within your network, or you could take advantage of a cloud-based SMTP server. Um, what I'll and that's what I'll be doing here in this example. Uh, and so, a little bit of how the communication works. Our settings are set on the Wazoo Manager. When a particular rule fires, our Wazoo Manager will reach out to our SMTP server, which of course will then forward us the uh, email into uh, whatever mailbox we have configured. So let's go ahead and look into doing that. So I first have, I'm taking advantage of this send in blue, they're just a cloud SMTP um, solution. So I guess free plug for these guys. Uh, yes, I know I'm showing my master password, but this is just set up for, for demo purposes. So once uh, before I post this and make this guys make this public, this account will no longer be active. Uh, so please don't grab at me in the comments about that. <laughs> uh, and so I have this account set up. So now uh, we will be using authentication. Right, where if you're using a internal SMTP server, maybe you just have to whitelist the host, uh, and you don't require for internal networks to take advantage of your SMTP server. You don't require authentication. Uh, it's just a whitelisting procedure, which that's you know that's fine too. But with most cloud-based SMTP solutions, you're going to have to set up a uh, some type of authentication and Wazoo ha within their documentation has a manual on how to do that and so we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of postfix to configure these credentials so then their documentation I'm gonna go ahead and copy this block out since our manager is running on a CentOS go ahead and paste that in to grab the postfix uh, software and download that and once that's done we'll move on to the rest of the config alright so it looks like we have that installed so now let's go ahead and navigate into our postfix uh, configuration go ahead and open a text editor and paste this guy in here and it looks like Wazoo is just stating we can put this at the end of the file here. So we'll go ahead and copy their block that they have provided and paste that in here. And we're going to make need to make a few tweaks. Um, so our relay host will be my send blue. Um, so we'll go ahead and be this guy. So I'll copy that. 
and paste this guy in here. Our port will still be 587, so that looks good. Uh, auth enable will be yes. We'll then put in our password here. And so let's go ahead and save this off and Go ahead and copy this guy for the address and password. So let me go ahead and change this to be our relay host. And we're going to be coming from info at opensecure.co then our password will be this guy all right so go ahead and put that in um, let me just cut out the contents of this just to make sure okay that looks good go ahead and change uh modify this file to the correct permissions and ownership. And we'll go ahead and secure it, uh, add some security settings around it. So, uh, you know, not just anyone can open and read this file. And let me go back into our main config here, let me comment out the cert because we won't be using that. So I'll comment this out. So we should now just be configured to send the password and we don't need any certification validation uh, with it. So save that off. I will go ahead and restart Postfix. So let's see that service is running okay looks good let's see if we can do a test uh, to info at opensecure.co and you know, go ahead and send it to info at opensecure.co And all right, so it looks like that came through. So that's good. It came into my junk <laughs> email, so I'll need to mark the sender as safe, but uh, it looks like our initial test works. Uh, so that's good. So it looks like our postfix is set up to uh, send us emails. And it looks like the password and everything is working correctly. So that's good. Uh, so now let's go ahead and tell the manager to send emails. So. We'll go ahead and go into the osec.conf. And we have this block here. Um, so we have within the global config block, we have some SMTP changes we can make. Uh, so we have the email notification set to yes, so that's good. For the SMTP server, we can point to our local host. So the manager will call Wazoo right to send the i mean we'll sorry we'll call a postfix to uh actually send the smtp request so we're going to point it to our local host here where if we were forwarding uh emails to a relay server like uh locally within our environment um we could just point it to the ip address or the domain name uh, of that host uh here so we could do that here as well uh, our email from, I'll just say info at opensecure.co and email to will be info.opensecure.co. So in my SMTP configuration that I have set up, I have uh, my only one user that's able to send uh, SMTP messages, right? And that's my, uh, so if I come into users, 
Um, so I could, so I only have my one user able to send uh, email, right? So I could, if I want to create a new like a uh, wazoo at opensecure.co, I could create a new SMTP key, generate a new password uh, for that for that account, and uh, configure it to. Uh, be able to send emails that way, right? So then I would use my email from would be, you know, wazoo at opensecure.co. Or, you know, if you have multiple environments, you could do it uh, based upon the data center. Um, so as long as your domain name um, is approved, your SMTP server should not have an issue with it. Um, and domain here, of course, being opensecure.co. Uh, so I have my email from block, I have my email to block, uh, so the email to will be the inbox, of course, that I want to send the emails to, and then I have an email per hour of 12. Uh, this can be any value, any numerical value, so you could, if you want to bundle up all your emails and just send one per hour, uh, you could set that up here. So I could, I could say, hey, every hour I just want to be emailed. I just want one email of all the alerts that happen within that hour that are set up for email alerting, right? So I don't flood my inbox with a ton of wazoo emails, right? I could just set up one to fire per hour, or in this case, uh, or you can you know set this number to however high you want. Uh, we then come down to the alerts tab, and we have this tag here: alert the email underscore alert underscore level. So this could be the threshold that you want to generate an alert. So for this demo purpose, I'm gonna do three, which is a really low level. So this will this will send pretty much every rule that's logged. Uh, this will send an email for that. Uh, so this, of course, would be way too low in a production environment. You would spam yourself with emails if you were to set it this low. Uh, but for demo purposes, we go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and save. Uh, some side note too, you could also if we go back into configuring email alerts, you can also set up specific rule IDs to generate an email alert. So where I have it set for thresholds, or, or sorry, uh, severity levels, right? You can specify specific rule IDs. So you could do that here. You can also have a do not delay um, set as well. So where we have, if we go back into it, where we have a max per hour, you know, once, um, once we hit 12, right, it'll wait till the next hour before sending any more, where the do not delay tag would send them immediately. Um, so regardless of how many emails you want to receive per hour, it'll send that immediately. And you can also set up different email uh, recipients as well. So you can see you can specify multiple email to tags. So if you have a lot of users um, that you want to be able to send emails to, you could set that up here. And let's go ahead and restart the manager. All right, and it looks like that's restarted. And let's go ahead and just verify that our configuration is saved. And it is, so that looks good, okay. Um, and Wazoo also has a binary uh, that we can call to kind of debug our uh, mail relay setup. So we can call this uh, mail D, which calls the, the, the mail daemon. I'm doing a dash F to run it in the foreground and uh, three Ds to increase the debugging uh, verbosity. So now let's wait and let's see if we can get some email sent to us. Let me go back into our security event. So we should see whenever we uh, receive a new event, we'll see an email be sent. Maybe let's see if we can create one. So let's see if we can, or here we go. So here we get some authentication failures coming through. Uh, and let's see if now we're starting to receive emails. And yeah, it looks like we are. So if we go back into our junk email, um, you can see here we have a 
email alert, uh, which is great. So we you kind of get some metadata around it as far as the what manager sent it. All right, we get the rule ID, and we also get the the raw output of the rule ID. So this is saying, uh, so this is listing out the ports that are listening uh, for connections has changed. Uh, if we scroll up, we should see. So we see when we restarted the manager, uh, we got that alert. We should see some login fails. Yep, here we go. So here we can see. So we also get the specific rule ID. We get the source IP that tried to log in. We get the username that tried to log in. And then we also get a portion of the log. So what we could do is, so say, you know, we're seeing a ton of logins from login attempts from the same address um, you know we're now getting a email alert we can now go into wazoo and say okay I see the rule ID is 5503 so if I come into here let's filter now on that specific IP address or sorry uh, rule ID let me specify rule dot ID and specify as 5503. Save that off. Events. And here we can see our rules that have recently fired that correlate to our email alert that we have here, right? So this is from, this alert was from this specific IP address, so we can drill down into that one even a little more. So let's parse out that. IP and I believe it was the 1.32 yep this guy so this is our specific alert so if we expand that out we then get a little more metadata around it as in terms of you know the country that they're coming from uh, so they can we can geolocate the IP address uh, and then what we could also do too is you know, only filter on this source IP and see what other alerts that they're potentially triggering. And so now what we can do is our investigators are now able to, you know, go off and work on other tasks. And when an alert is fired that requires, you know, some eyeballs on it and some further investigation, uh, our investigators will now receive an email indicating that uh, we have the specific rule ID, we have some metadata around it so we can easily get to it within Kibana, and then we can use that information to uh, to take further action, right? Whether that's maybe block an IP address, uh, maybe this brings to light that a host is actually compromised, uh, we need to get it off the network and dig into a root cause um, of you know what exactly is on that box and other tasks you know that your investigators will need to work on um, but now this gives us the ability to quickly bring, bring things to light without us having to you know constantly just sit and monitor a dashboard you know we now when wazoo detects a threshold that we want to alert on um, we now get an email alert and we can take the appropriate action so I appreciate you guys spending the time with me and I look forward to our next video. And as always, let me know down below what you liked or disliked about this video, any errors I may have made, as well as recommendations for other open source tools you think I should explore.